One of my, uh, abyss cannons. It failed. We're not liking what we're seeing. This hobby doesn't give you time. Joe, you telling me all this rock could be contaminated? Yeah. Oh my god. It's almost the end of 2025, and like everyone else, Polar Reef is working hard to wrap up the year. Today, the team is focusing on completing a few projects they've already started, working on finding some answers, and of course, repairing whatever might need to be fixed. A lot of work has been done to the 17,000 gallon tank over the past year. Recently, the teams have worked on perfecting the left side of the tank. Today, Michelle is splashing down for a routine maintenance dive to fix some coral and some equipment. One of my uh, abyss cannons that, were, that was uh, blowing this way, it fell. I guess the... Uh, Zip ties. Mm. Didn't hold, didn't hold. She wasted no time working on reattaching the pump. She's also showing us some serious balancing skills to get it done. As you can see, guys, we're still working and refining the left side. A few weeks ago, the team ran PAR measurements, and it revealed that some of the coral below the acros were not getting enough light. So today, part of Michelle's dive is to correct that issue. We just added some more light to some of the corals by giving it a little trim. And uh, along with that cutting though, we get a light more now. Next, she gets to work on repositioning some Montes on the right side of the tank that gave way. But if you shoved it in, right here, that's it, yeah, right? That's gonna color, it's not dead. You wanna put an acro there? No, let it color up. I hate, f I hate f seeing white. <laughs> and that gets shoved in. Amazing. With Michelle wrapping up her dive, the team shifts attention to another project they've been working on for a really long time. The suspension lighting platform for the experimental tanks. Today, they work on closing out this project before the new year by installing the frame for the new lighting platform. I have a better idea. This cover. Well, I think we're going to put the pan on top and then spray the front. And then spray this piece black. Yeah, I got, I got it. Okay, so then I'll do it like that. Then I don't deduct nothing. With the framing almost complete, the team is pulled into a more pressing issue that involves something that has haunted Polar Reef for a while, the elevated levels of metals. The team has been battling to get to the bottom of how these metals are ending up in the system. Over the past few months, they changed out pumps, scrubbed large water towers, and broken down large pieces of equipment. You can check out the episodes with the links in the description below. Today, the metals strike again, and the team goes into emergency mode to fight it further. We're not liking what we're seeing, obviously and we're doing an emergency water change. In, in the reefing hobby, when you get in trouble, the first thing you do is a water change, mm -hmm. right? And then you try to isolate and figure out exactly what's going on. And that's, you know, what we did. This hobby doesn't give you time. To break up the day, John and Joe decide to head outside to Polo Pond. What's up? Hi, Andrew. So the pond outside, as you know, hasn't been holding temperature all that great. Dropped pretty aggressively last night though, down from 69 to 67. Just want to let you know Joe and John are up there now trying to fix that, get the temperature back up. Okay, uh, why don't you get those guys on it before it really gets cold out there. Now they're working out, just trying to get through all the different okay, heaters. Great, thanks. John and Joe waste no time getting to work to fix the problem. With winter in full swing, the team cannot risk having a malfunctioning heater. After all, this pond, it's filled with Polo Reef's championship koi. Adding a third heater to the pond to try to keep the temperature up. Four and seven eighths plus five, two, seven, uh, seven and three quarters. Two and five eighths. Yeah, I think it's it's three inches. So I, mean, I think we're in business. Yeah. All right. Is it off now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sixty-seven is the pond temperature. The unit set up in Fahrenheit. It's set for seventy degrees with one degree of differential, meaning it'll turn off at 71 and turn on at 69. So it's plus or minus one of the set point. It's set for heater and that's the display. So that we're back at the main menu, it's set for 67. John and Joe are relieved that the heater didn't go unnoticed. With winter in full swing, this could have spelled disaster for the championship koi. Luckily, Polar Reef has their A team on it and they're able to avoid a catastrophe. They finish up outside, and without skipping a beat, they head back behind Polo Lab, where the rest of the team is working on the aragonite chamber. At Polo Reef, the team runs both a sulfur reactor and an aragonite reactor to handle the nutrient load created by frequent feeding in the 17,000 gallon tank. 
The sulfur reactor uses sulfur beads that host bacteria converting nitrates into nitrogen gas. This in turn reduces excess nutrients and also produces sulfuric acid as a byproduct, in turn lowering the pH of the water. To balance this out, aragonite is used. As water flows through aragonite media, it neutralizes the acid and brings the pH back to safe levels before returning back to the tank. They begin the process by removing the media with the vacuum and hosing it down. It's important to keep the aragonite clean to avoid it from clogging. At Polo Reef, this is done frequently to allow water to flow through freely, letting the aragonite work its magic. One thing the team is about to find out is you can never trust Joe with a hose. <laughs> After a quick wardrobe change, Alex the Vet is back in the lab working on preparing some experiments that will be conducted outside of Polo Reef. Previous episodes, Andrew, Alex, and Dr. Chan from Yale began talks of potential experiments. In 2026, Andrew and the team will head to Yale to test out the Ivy Leagues and hopefully have some questions answered. Made it to Yale and the Ivies, baby. Ivy League lab. Holy cow. Wait till you guys see this. See, we are at Yale, about to enter. There's yep. bacteria already on the plate. Yep. Go bacteria, go. Easy as that. Okay. Oh, uh oh. I may have spilled some Long Island sound water on there. Yeah. It's all in here? Yeah, yeah. All the magic juice. Guess, maybe these guys want to be a sample. Uh, How not, cold is it? Minus 80 Celsius. 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 Minus 80 Celsius. Yeah. yeah. Hit that subscribe button to stay tuned. You won't want to miss it. Back in the lab, the team is finishing up cleaning the media in the aragonite chamber. Now, they're ready to tackle the last piece of the puzzle, outfitting the chamber with a new platform. The primary purpose of raising the platform is to allow more water to flow through. To help with the problem, they decided to use a different material with larger holes to help with the flow. This project has been done in phases slowly over the past couple of months, starting with the sulfur reactor. It feels good to complete another project before the new year, but the day, it's not over. It's already been a long one so far at Polo Reef, and it's about to get even longer. Earlier, Joe worked on completing the platform for the experimental tanks, and now he's adding the final pieces to make it look polished. I want to cut it, and what I need to measure. Easy for you there or no? This is the, for the canopy over the lab tanks. So we're gonna create like a valance around. So this way we can hide all the ballast and wiring that later on that we're gonna have on top of this. Make this yes. joint. No, no, you can go in the middle. Yes. Yeah, go like that. Oh, it's not yeah. gonna be the same. Yeah. Well, let's try this. Yeah, so one. Yeah, it's better. Okay. Oh, hook up. With multiple projects done and the day coming to a close, Andrew receives the latest ICP test. And the metals, they still continue to haunt Polo Reef. Copper keeps climbing up to three. Cobalt's on the high side. We keep doing water changes and the copper keeps going up. Where is it coming from? Hey Andrew, are you busy? You're looking at... Uh, I'm just looking at the, at, at the, at the copper in the yeah. 280s and, so, and I'm just wondering what you think. So we did the water change, the emergency right. water change to bring these, you know, levels down. But I have a thesis in the back where I want to show you where is a good possibility where this problem is coming from. Like every time we added coral, we brought new rock. I, be I believe this piece here was added. Yeah, that one probably is new. Yeah, really. You see the color, you know, yeah. You see the color, and there's another. And we were behind. adding frag after frag. Right, and and then you know, like in here, for an example. Oh my God, Joe, uh, that's the huge piece we right. added for the pearl bearing. Right, that's what I'm talking about. So like, there is another piece in the bag that we, you know, you so can see that we added you know, to, to, for height, right? For height, in the back. for height. When we got the orange passion and and the pearl berry. so we basically could be introducing it via rock. Okay, Let's and and the, the rock is. Let me show you in the top. So here we have all the rock, right? So we take rock from here, and we put them in the two eighties. Question is, we need to do an ICP of this water. Of this water, okay, and this way we can know for sure if copper and cobalt or whatever metals are coming from here. And it's reduced into the tank. And now, some of this rock goes in live right from 
let's say Jason Giannis when he delivers. Right. right. But sometimes we take rock from outside to make it live again. Right. And that's where let's go. we got all our rocks stored underneath this equipment. Okay. But look at mainly here. You see the copper tubing? You see the oxidation? You see the rust? This is all oxidation. That all of this, when it rains, is coming into our rock. If it's here, if it's over there, if it's over there. You see how it's dripping over our 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 rock. Joe, you telling me all this rock could be contaminated? Yeah. Oh my God. Let's get on this and test this rock and test the, the bin. Yes, A ASAP. Okay. Let's yep. go inside and... <laughs> this is gonna... This is now taboo rock! Right. We need to... Start off. That was a little humbling out there, seeing that rock and thinking that maybe. That the only reason why it may make sense, Joe, is because those 280s is where, that's where we added a lot of the rock. We'll have an answer. We'll test this rock, right, in bins. And, and we're going to get ICPs back and we're going to know. But now I'm asking you, probability-wise, where's your head at that this is the problem? I think... The introduction of copper was definitely coming from these rock. Rock. But do you think it's from the HVAC and the well, shelving and the metals? There is everything. You because there is copper exposure of oxidation of the copper pipes above the rock. So every time it rains, that oxidation is going onto the rock. There is God. And that could be coming from the gutter. Do we have copper? I have copper. You have, you have copper gutters. Yeah. I do. Yeah. You have copper gutters. Copper, and I have copper stone guards. Copper valleys on your roof. On my roof, right? Yes, everything is copper. I think I'm 100% that it started with the rock. And, and the rock in the 280s were probably the highest proportion of rock we used. To the volume of water. To too. the volume of the water yeah. in all the systems. Right. And don't forget, we have no sand. So there is nowhere for this stuff to precipitate. Joe, you're telling me... You all this rock could be contaminated? Yeah. With the rocks as the prime suspect, the metal hunts continue into 2026. Stay tuned for future episodes to see the results of the potentially contaminated rock. You won't want to miss it. As the day wraps up, the crew steps back from months of upgrades, lighting platforms, coral work, pump repairs, metals testings, and the aragonite chamber overhaul. None of it was easy, but that's Polar Reef. One task at a time, finishing strong. With 2025 ending and 2026 ahead, the team will keep building, fixing, and improving. Because at Polo Reef, the work, it's never done. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to stay updated on everything Polo Reef. Until next time.